One of the most common questions we receive here at Salt Strong is how deep should I be fishing for redfish? And I can tell you personally, I've caught redfish in just a few inches of water as well as 15 feet of depth. And there's such a big disparity based on where you live, the type of structure you're fishing, and a number of other different factors that really makes it hard to give a one size fits all answer. And what I'd like to do instead is cover some of the top inshore spots that you can target redfish at all times of year and kind of dissect the different depths you're gonna to wanna to be targeting at each of those types of spots. So we're gonna cover it all in this video from how deep you're gonna to want to fish, the types of lures you would use at these depths to have maximum success, and some other pro tactics that are going to help you guys get on some redfish. Now the first type of environment I'd like to cover is a open flat, whether this be a grass flat, marsh flat, mud flat, fishing in the Carolinas, Florida, Texas. I've been in all of these different types of estuaries and seen that they actually all have the same about bottom contours and depth ranges, which is about from one foot to about five feet. But most redfish are typically going to be found feeding in one to two feet of depth in these areas. Reason for this is most of the prey items that they are after are close to oyster bars, shorelines, points, things of that nature, and they're not out in the open kind of deep zones of some of these flats and redfish typically aren't found feeding in those areas a whole lot now there are going to be outliers obviously and I'm sure that you're thinking of some spots right now that you've caught redfish in some deeper zones on some of these flats but I would say that when I target these areas 70% of the redfish that I catch are closer to the shorelines closer to some of that shallower structure where a lot of those prey items are and I find most of them again in that one to two feet of depth so most of the times what I'm gonna go ahead and do is power fish in these zones with paddle tails and topwaters just to cover as much of that shoreline and shallow structure as possible. Running the perimeters of a lot of these flats is mainly my favorite thing to do up against these shorelines at higher tides. And then when the tide drops out, usually I'm gonna be looking for those zones that are still around that depth range, but closer to some of the deeper spots in case those fish wanna go off and have an area of refuge if they feel the tides are getting too low. So finding areas in close proximity to deeper zones are really important, but I don't find a lot of feeding fish at the deeper parts of some of these flats and grass areas. Most of the time it's going to be closer to shallow structure right along the shoreline right along a point or right along an oyster bar now another very common type of area to find redfish in is the marsh creek systems and these are very winding long mazes of creeks that can be as shallow as two to three feet in depth as well as as deep as five to ten feet in depth and even getting out to some of the entrances to some of these marsh mazes a lot of times they're as deep as 10 to 15. now most of the redfish that i'm going to find are typically around the points of some of these creeks and they're right where that current is flowing in and flowing out and they're able to get themselves some really easy meals as that tide moves in bait and pulls out shrimp from the marsh most times what I'm going to see is redfish holding in areas that the current has not moved a whole lot of sediment with the tide and they're not having to work against that current as I mentioned earlier redfish are a little bit lazier they don't like to fight really hard against a heavy flow of current so typically you're gonna find them in shallower zones in these creek systems again near those entry exit points where water is going to be flowing in and out I don't typically find them right along the sides of the channels usually at the creek mouths and points in these larger systems are going to generally be at about three to four feet in depth where they're not having to sit right along the shoreline because typically there's not going to be a lot of bait right in that area but they're going to put themselves kind of close to those entry exit zones where there's going to be a good flow of bait so again in that three to four foot depth range where they still are able to get in on that flow but not miss out on the meals and because these mazes are so large and it can be hard to kind of zero in on which specific opening or entry exit point is going to be best for redfish what i really like to look for is oyster bars on points because that adds an extra little bit of structure you're typically going to see redfish congregating at getting on crustaceans small bait fish and other prey items that are you know relating to those oyster bars now one exception I'd like to mention to this rule is in the winter time when the water levels drop really low the water temperature gets really cold and those fish are looking for some deep zones they can take cover from the dropping tide levels and the really cold temperatures typically that's going to be in those areas that are about 8 to 10 feet in depth a lot of times I'll find them taking cover in most of those deep holes right at the front of the marsh mazes or entrances to these creek systems where there's going to be a good flow of bait on incoming and outgoing tides that they can get onto with these dropping tide levels they're looking for areas typically Typically where it's going to be a little bit warmer especially in the Carolinas Georgia where some of those temperatures do get really low and they need somewhere there's going to be stable thermoclines in a much deeper part of that marsh creek system that they can still get easy meals but stay warm as well so again in the winter time I am going to move away from those three to four foot depth zones and about transitioning to that eight to ten foot depth range is where I have the most luck with those fish 
Now, regardless of where you live, another very popular type of spot to target redfish at is on docks that are in intercoastal channels, pier pilings, bridge pilings, things of this nature. And most of the time, what we're gonna see with docks that are on intercoastal channels is they're gonna be sitting at the very end of the dock, somewhere between 10 and 15 feet. Now, that's not to say there's some bridge pilings and docks and things of that nature that go a little bit shallower or a little bit deeper, but what you wanna focus on instead of the actual depth of the dock is the part of the dock that you're fishing. I would say 90% of the fish that I catch on docks, and I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of Luke's videos lately, he's fishing the end of these docks as well. Again, 90% of the fish that I catch on the end of docks because that is where the widest variety of prey items are going to be. So don't focus too much on the actual depth of the dock that you're fishing. I would instead try to focus on those docks that are close to varying depth ranges. The ones that are on intercoastal channels are great options and try to focus on just the ends of those docks. Now, something very important to remember about all the different depths that I've just talked about in these different estuaries for redfish is that there always is going to be outliers. And what I've told you is a guideline, not a hard set of rules on finding redfish. And the reason I've given you these different depths and where you should be looking for redfish is so you can construct a time-saving and efficient game plan to target the 60 to 70% of fish that will follow the rules instead of wasting your valuable fishing time, jumping around in different depths, looking for that extra 30% of fish that may not be following the rules. So it's important to give yourself a good structured game plan and stick to it so that you can catch the most number of fish possible. Again, playing the numbers game is the best way to get onto the most fish by sticking to a good game plan. But if you would like to see all the different types of ins and outs that factor into the extra 30%, I highly recommend you join us in the Salt Strong Insider Club where we have live weekly on the water reports that show you how we fish in a number of variety of different factors so you can see exactly how to get onto these fish in different scenarios, different estuaries, and keep up with some of the trends that are happening right now on the water so that you can get on the most redfish possible. So guys, thank you so much again for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next video. So if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the best online fishing club in America because we literally guarantee that you'll be catching more fish in less time while saving money on your tackle. We do this by providing you with premium education, an exclusive online fishing community, and access to group discounts on the best saltwater fishing tackle. To learn more, go to saltstrong.com. We hope to see you in the Insider Club family soon.